Beloved, these are exciting days of a rising victor of Paul, who will be victorious. For victory is unity, and unity is victory. And all opposed to the living word of God who comes forth as our overcomer of overcomers is Antichrist. If they oppose the unity of the brethren of love, in love arising as Christ foretold in John 10 that he alone would become in the end days the good shepherd over all the flocks of man. So get prepared to go to ascend unto new heights of his revealed glory, the resplendence of his honor, his mercy flowing, for he is the beneficent and he is the one who guides all of us through his spirit of prophecy. So get ready. It is time for the Kingdom Age veil to finally be fully revealed as I am only now allowed to do. People have been grabbing their Bibles, Korans, whatever. And they revere it. They would fight over it. And yet they don't know what it means and it does not seem to matter that the words actually mean something. If the words really had no meaning, What's it all about, Alfie? <laughs> Prophecy. Prophecy. Oh, prophecy. The most misunderstood presence that the Lord has swept through with the blessedness of His Spirit. Prophecy. Misunderstood because prophecy much of it has been told to change the future, not to tell it. All the horrors of the book of Revelation will come forth exactly as foretold if we oppose not the causes. All over this world, Alatra to the highest heaven, there are groups of people joining together of all religions or none at all doing good things, a spirit movement of love and action. Kingdom age is ahead for all those who will be irresistibly drawn to he who is our irresistible love. And love only wants to be irresistibly loved irresistibly. And as we go forth, prophecy has never been told to tell the future but to change it and prophecy has been misunderstood greatly I am not one who's coming forth with fire out my mouth although uh, I do have a bit of a sharp tongue I sold credit cards for 18 years but that Elijah is one of the two witnesses a different set of two witnesses of Revelation 11 than Zechariah three, four, and five. I am that Elijah, one who would send forth the right, the flying scroll, everlasting gospel, Revelation 14. The writing of Habakkuk 2.2, 2, let all those reading uh, the vision of God run, and that's what I've been reading to everyone, is the vision of God, the restoration that was promised to come, and if it came not, the Bible would be alive. So, uh, it's time to realize what's going to happen in this world. Revelation comes forth through Isaiah 60 and 61. If you read it, money from all over this world, love being stirred up. Christ's love through us is going to save this planet from the edge of annihilation. 
and it'll come forth in a time, times, and half a time. Three and a half years it'll take, not by power nor by might, but by the Spirit of the Lord, truth will finally explode across the lands. And then the Lord's peoples shall be healed because the Lord has healing under the wings of his most regal eagle of the eons, his Holy Spirit, his dove of love. And that roaring, roaring lion of Zion is roaring louder than ever before to come up. His voice is calling to each and every one of us as if we were the only one. The brightest light in this world is at this channel and upon this Latter-day Mountain of Isaiah 2 and Micah 4, the Latter-day Mountain of Isaiah 25, where the marriage supper of the Lamb can begin, all shall have their shame and their guilt removed. For if God condemns us not, how could we condemn one another? And as it is written, these are the days of Elijah where the Lord's voice with all authority is ringing in the good news and bringing it forth that he says to you and to you and to you and to all of you, he says, I will be your God. You will be my people. I will forgive your iniquity and I shall never remember it. If he remembered it, God would be a liar. And God would be a liar if he sent anyone to hell who had their love light on. For it is written that all calling upon the Lord shall be saved. And it is written that all sins shall be forgiven man except the unforgivable sin. Jesus said that if that mattered. Otherwise, God would be a liar. And God is not a liar. So there has come a point that I have been appointed as the director of heaven upon the earth for the kingdom age to come forth. So love from love, peace from peace, or prince of peace thereof. And so receive now the kingdom age holy hope from our living Christ Isa Yeshua Jesus, who is our living hope. And know that these are days of love's everlasting gospel of Revelation 14. So it's time that we arise and it's time that we go up towards him. And because he is crying forth from the wilderness of our ignorance that these are the days of Shiloh, the days of one foretold, the foretold ministry from the beginning from Jacob and Moses, Moses, one whose eyes are red and dull of wine, that these are the days of Elijah, days of the restoration of Acts 3.21 and Matthew 17.11. Jesus said Elijah would restore all things, and he asked who would bring forth meat for the master's household while the master is away in Matthew 24. And if all this was not true, God would be a liar. So receive now faith from faith, mercy from mercy, and blessings from he who is the beloved, the blessed, and the adored, who now arises as the most radiant son of love imaginable, as Christ finally becomes the good shepherd over all the flocks of man, exactly as he foretold in John 10. And if this wasn't true, God would sadly only be a liar. So welcome to this definitive video concerning the manifesting in-time prophecy uh, of Elijah within God's Word. And as people open up their hearts and minds unto Christ's everlasting gospel truths of his Word of Revelation 14's prophecy, they will know that God is not a liar. But otherwise, if all this did not happen, what can I say? He would be because the truth is, the everlasting gospel is, uh, there is no such thing as a, a gospel unless it is written, people. And these are the days of his end time writer. So please understand that nobody, absolutely nobody living without deaf ears could ever unhear uh, the following revealed end time truths any more than they could ever become unborn. It is impossible. 
And it is absolutely impossible as well for such new visionaries by enlightenment. It's impossible for them to ever become blind again once they see, just as they could never be uncreated. And nor could former blind people ever willingly go back to the darkest darkness of the blindest ignorance that they once embraced as their pillow. For once they uh, embraced their divinely sent gift of sight, they could never unsee the brightest truth of love's blinding glory as the harvest begins. And what is going to happen in this world the wheat and the tares cannot grow together. I am the wheat and people opposed to Christ's unification of all man. The one world faith of love are fully anti-Christ. This is the revealed mystery of God. And if God's mystery was not to be revealed, as it plainly says in Revelation 10, 7, God would be a liar. For it is written that when the seventh trumpet sounds, and it has sounded first, because Jesus is not a liar, he said the first is last, and the last is first. So the seventh perfect trumpet has sounded first. and But if it had not, then the mystery could never be over. And when the mystery is over, all nations immediately become the Lord's, and all people are his and because he has given his kingdom age covenant that was veiled throughout the centuries unto all mankind. And the unveiling of his kingdom age promise of peace is here at this channel alone. For he says, I will be your God, you will be my people. I will forgive your iniquity, never remember it, never forget that people. Let that re resound evermore redundantly within your mind and more importantly within your heart and let the wise understand that the Elijah of this age was called Shiloh in Genesis 49 12 one whose eyes are red and dull of wine one who uh, one who is doing this thing here you can't even see it and if you see that a little bit of marijuana uh, thingy I got arthritis and I'm 60 years old. It doesn't matter what goes into a body, Christ said. It's what comes out. And what's coming out of me is love, faith, hope, and peace. So the Spirit of the Lord says that at the end of this age, according to Genesis 49, 12, Jacob and Moses prophesied, in the latter days, if he did not come forth in these days as it was predicted, uh, a man with eyes who are red and dull uh, of wine. And by the way, uh, people's eyes don't really get that bloodshot from wine. It's a little bit of THC will do that fine. But if it did not come to pass that this Shiloh, and I used to think Jesus was, was uh, Shiloh all my life until I realized he, his eyes have never been red and dull of wine. He's not an alcoholic. I am. But if people will not embrace that this end-time alcoholic would come forth with his message for all mankind, exactly as Malachi 3 has predicted, if mankind will not wake up to that, then God's word would just be, he would be a liar. And if that one transgressed by wine of Habakkuk 2, King James, even though my soul isn't upright, if I didn't come forth out of obscurity, as King James Bible says in Habakkuk 2's in time vision of God's reformation of his love, spiritual restoration of all spiritual truth, God would be a liar. Because it is foretold that Shiloh would come forth with the scepter of all of his authority. And it's just the authority that love always wins. And love is all in all. And that love is always transcendent. And that love goes beyond us, just as we go beyond ourselves. For we are greater than our own being as imagined. For all of mankind has been groaning with great 
expectations for the revelation of who is the sons and daughters of God. And if that didn't come as the apostle uh, uh, Paul foretold, then God would be a liar. But I am Daniel, the latter day Daniel of Daniel 12, 13, one who would arise and embrace his destiny. And God is not a liar. And he is love. And because all of this is true, these are the days of Elijah, days of the restoration of all spiritual truth. The, Jesus said uh, the restoration of all things because love alone leads the way and shows the way, the truth, the life. There is no way unto our everlasting Father but through love whom he is. It is all about love and about nothing else. All of our religion is as filthy rags and all of our understandings of prophecy, right, wrong, uh, otherwise it doesn't matter, indifferent, uh, has been of no consequence compared to his love, for he was slain before the foundation of the earth for one and all of us. That is the truest truth. And God has never been a racist. He's never had favorites. He is not a respecter of men. If he was, he would be a liar, because his word says that that is a sin. He has loved all of us equally. And who are we according to him? According to Christ, we are gods. John 10, he declared it. But we are angels in the flesh. That is what he did not tell us. And it is true because the glory of his latter house is greater than that of the former, the word of God says in the book of Micah 4. And if that was not true, uh, he would be a liar. And if it was not true that the first are last, he would be a liar. And uh, what does that mean? That we have all leaned wrongly, incorrectly unto our own understandings. The Bible firmly said, don't lean to your own understanding. Or you make God out to be a liar. Because we don't understand that the very last thing um, in the Word of God is the New Jerusalem. And that uh, even though it was one of the last things, it has been indeed one of the uh, first things that have happened. Uh, punch in uh, New Jerusalem, uh, NASA. And this is what you will see. Pictures of the New Jerusalem taken by the Hubble telescope on the edge of our universe, shining celestial city. And just because the first are last, the last are first, the seven trumpets sounded first because it was last, or else God would be a liar. And God would be a liar if that didn't have direct um, impact on the angel of the mystery of God sounding first because the first is last. And in the same way, Daniel 12, 1, we are in the days of the latter day Daniel of Daniel 12. And I am the latter day Daniel who will cause the shattering of the power of the holy people because God's word of Malachi 3, 1 has opened his message to the world of Jeremiah 31, his kingdom age covenant that was foretold for the latter days in Jeremiah 1, 10, Haggai 2, 2, that would tear down all the kingdoms of man uh, uh, our faith and our imaginations built on crooked spirituality. And if all that did not happen, God would be a liar. So it, it's it's time to receive his restoration so that God does not be a liar. So says the Lord God, that um, so shall my word be that goeth forth from my mouth. It shall not return void unto him, but shall accomplish that which he has planned. And if you people are hiding the light under a bushel and not receiving this end time message, you are making God into a liar. So may all those of love's brightest and most glorious faith of his most perfect peace in these days of Elijah now come to clearly see that there's no darkness whatsoever in any uh, biblical prophecy aside from ignorance of it alone. So please now reverse all in, in supposedly informed opinions about this collection of end time Elijah prophecies until all of the Bible's prophetic evidence has been laid out by the inspiration of the Lord's dove of love who always stands tall as his infallible Holy Spirit of prophecy 
who makes a way where there has seemed to be no way. And let all those wanting to shine as the sun with the Lord's wisdom to understand that if the Lord's living word was not flowing anew, as Daniel 12, 9, 4, told for the end, for it was, his word was only closed until the time of the end, it says so there, that there would be a huge problem, people. Because if, if, uh, if his word was only closed until these times of the end, as Daniel 12, 9, if that didn't happen, God would be a liar. And if his word didn't open again, so would his, so never could he pour out his spirit upon all flesh, as the prophet Joel foretold that he would do. If he didn't do that and let everybody know how deeply he has truly loved them, he would be a liar, because if he threw one person in hell, uh, a person with their love alive, he would be a liar. Because Jesus said that you can't even tell who's born again, because it's as the wind, you don't know which way it blows. And Jesus said, if that counts for anything, he said that to be born again, you got to be as a little child, you know, with your love alive, as a verb moving forward in action. Otherwise, you let it die, your faith is dead too. <laughs> you got no love, you got no faith, you're just a dead person who has a form of godliness, denying the power of love thereof and the power of God who is love. And people, you got to realize that if God is Jesus and Jesus is God and he is, that uh, for God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten love because that is Christ's name, that is God's name. And those who love are born of God and know him because God is love, Jesus is love. So God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten love, so whosoever would love should not perish but have everlasting love and everlasting life. And this is the truest message ever pub published uh, about the approaching kingdom age where all the captives of prisons shall be released, new penal colonies all over the world. People shall be living in beautiful homes that they own. It'll be made of garbage and bottles, but they will look beautiful. And uh, they won't need air conditioning and ownership uh, of all uh, desolate uh, areas in the world will be rebuilt and inhabited. And uh, there'll be a chicken in every pot, a vine in, over every person. And in the kingdom age's fullness, people will have no more racism uh, at all because everybody will come to realize that God has always loved us all equally and that this faith of his restoration, of his love, totally proves once and for all that there is no one group more esteemed by the Lord God love. Uh, the mind of Christ is coming forth right now. And that this faith of love, uh, as it is written, those, who, the just shall live by my faith. And it is the faith of the equality, of the unification of the brethren of God, as Jesus foretold in Gethsemane. And if, if, if that didn't happen, God would be a liar. So understand that these are the days the, of the kingdom age, everlasting new covenant to be given uh, so that the kingdom age can even begin. If people did not come to understand the equality of God uh, and that uh, we're not coming into judgment if we're walking with the Spirit, the Bible says those walking with the Spirit are under no condemnation. That means to be walking with your love light on as a verb and leave the land of the walking dead and commit not blasphemy of the Holy Spirit. For the truth is that if we let our light of love go out, then uh, there is no more light within us and there is no redemption for us. That is us letting God's light in us, God to go out in us. And then that is the unforgivable sin. But all other sin, I don't care what it is, uh, uh, whether it's uh, um, repented sin or unrepented sin, all sins shall be forgiven, says the Lord God. And it is written, and it is written, Jesus said that, if that matters to anybody. So these are the days for the shattering of the power of the holy people, as Daniel 12, 7 clearly says. And it happens in the days of the latter day. Daniel, who causes it? Who is Shiloh? Who is Elijah? Who is Joshua, the alcoholic chosen in Zechariah 3, whose eyes are red and dull of wine? 
And then Zechariah 4, God uh, sends one candlestick as a sign to send off the everlasting gospel. Zechariah 5, the everlasting gospel of Revelation 14. First video onto this channel. Listen to that if you uh, doubt. But otherwise, if people will not believe what I'm saying, then all these prophecies could not come to pass and God would be a liar. And if the prediction of God's message unto mankind did not come to pass exactly as Malachi 3, 1 has said, to prepare the way for Emmanuel's return, our God with us in the flesh, then God would definitely be a liar. And if the true foretold Elijah did not restore all spiritual truth by his written word and reveal the lawless one, Morgan official, and the false prophet, Dr. David Auer, who can be seen calling down fire from heaven, exactly as Revelation 13 says, and Morg would die by a sword because he is a former uh, freak show, a uh, sword swallower. And talk about blasphemy. People, get off your craziness. Uh, I hear people, oh yeah, Trump's uh, the Antichrist, or Pope's the Antichrist, or uh, uh, Obama. The, these people are, have never openly blasphemed the, blas, blasphemed the Lord. But Morg official, whose name is Death, the lawless one, Antichrist wannabe, who becomes the Antichrist after he is risen back up, um, according to the Word of God, if that counts for anything, um, he... Uh, makes videos, uh, the names of them are like, uh, one is Jesus is Satan. Uh, hello, that's blasphemy. Uh, or he makes videos like, uh, Jesus lied about hell and invented hell. That's blasphemy. Jesus never lied. God never lied. But people don't have understanding of what the word of God says. And so in these days, because Jesus predicted in Matthew 17, 11, uh, the the, uh, the Elijah person would come, a, a real flesh and blood man, people way over spiritualized. I thought Elijah was going to be this uh, uh, guy with fire coming out of his mouth, and it turns out that's a different Elijah. That Elijah is still to come. Uh, the two witnesses, Moses and Elijah, the originals. Uh, Dr. David O'Rourke, he says he is the two. Sp uh, <laughs> <laughs> that was hilarious. And if uh, the Lord's prophesied in time, Elijah uh, was not ignored as his messenger, as the Lord God's messenger unto Israel, exactly as Isaiah 41 predicts, but it also says the rest of the world will come to realize that I'm right about everything I preach, because this has been taught since the beginning, as early as Genesis 49 12, if that counts. But otherwise, he would be a, a, a liar. And if that latter-day Elijah, who is myself, if I had not done absolutely everything uh, in vain for my faith and for my love, my, I married a schizophrenic woman, Linda. I love her forever, but everything for my ver marriage was in vain for love, and everything has been in vain uh, for my faith. And it, this is the faith of Prislam. That is uh, Israel's brand new name, as uh, Isaiah 6, 60, uh, 2, 2 foretold. And if that did not happen, God would be uh, a, a liar. So um, all of this is happening in connection to getting the message out to Israel that they have inherited all mankind, Isaiah 54, 3. He, they've inherited all the Gentiles, all the rest of the world. And if that did not happen, uh, God would be a liar. And if the seven trumpet blew not, uh, and all nations became the Lord, as it is written when the first uh, trumpet sounds, which is the seventh, because the first is last, last is first. If all that didn't come to pass, and Israel did not inherit the, all mankind, as it is written, then God would just be a liar. So know that I have been given... Um, the charge to give them their kingdom age message and upon this latter day mountain and if a latter day mountain did not appear god would be a liar because it says so in isaiah 2 micah 4 and uh, isaiah 25 this is the mountain on which all shame and guilt shall be removed because uh god is saying to all of us i will forgive you i will never remember your sin and if he did he would be a liar so it it is written in Jeremiah 31.1 that in the latter days, it says so, 
uh, that God would be the God of all Israel and the, uh, all families of Israel. And if that did not happen, and it has now, they just won't don't want to receive that information. But if it didn't happen, God would be a liar. And it's clearly foretold in Deuteronomy 18, 18, that one like Moses would come forth. And I always thought that was Jesus, but you know, he was nothing like Jesus. Uh, Moses. He was he, he was nothing like Jesus. Um, it, and it's foretold in Deuteronomy 18 that uh, one would come forth another covenant giver, uh, just like Moses. I am the kingdom age covenant giver. And I am a writer just like Moses, exactly as Isaiah 28 foretold, line upon line, precept upon precept. Uh, and uh, if you don't believe that I, I'm one like Moses, I challenge any of you to listen to the very first video under this channel and tell me that doesn't sound like Moses. Um, so it is foretold that the strong and mighty one of Isaiah 28, the Elijah writer, would come forth as it is written. Uh, and that if the world's ignorance concerning the Lord's end time servant doesn't go away, even though I've done everything in vain, Isaiah 49, 4, ignorance, ignorance, it, 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 in the mouth of two witnesses are all truth established. Uh, so you want to know who Elijah is, is, the one being ignored by the world. If, but if this does not go away in the time of God's favor, and in Isaiah 49, that is my charge. Read that whole chapter if you want to know my charge. Uh, and it was never Jesus. Jesus never did anything in vain. He knew in Gethsemane when he uh, prayed for our oneness, even though that we would never unite. Otherwise, he would have been wasting his time, and it would have been in vain. But he knew he was sending our unity. And so it's time that uh, uh, he knew that I would be pointing to the gospel truth of mankind's total oblivion, to the destruction of absolutely all life, exactly as Zephaniah 1 foretells. And it's clearly written that all birds, men, fish, animals, everything would be killed and entirely wiped off the earth as God declared. And if that did not happen, God would be a liar. It will happen if people will not heed this message of Malachi 3.1, the message of Jeremiah 31. Jeremiah is the only kingdom age prophet necessary in this world. And uh, so in these days of Isaiah and, and Matthew 24, the great white cloud of Revelation 14 coming forth, uh, God would be a liar if this did not happen. But you know what? The wheat can no longer grow with the, the, the tares. And I am the wheat, and everybody else is the tares who will not join with the oneness of our love in, in, in our Lord of love always. And if all this wasn't true, I'm afraid to tell you, God, he really would be a liar. True story.